Well, welcome in the name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. We're continuing to talk about overcoming. And in this episode, we're going to address overcoming the past and finally stepping in to the purpose God has for you. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. Many of us, and I'm included, a lot of our lives, we were held captive to various things, various opinions of people, and we were not able to be fully effective and to fully step in. How many of us have wandered in the wilderness for year after year? Have we walked around the mountain, seen the promised land, put our toe in it at times, but we've never entered and more than most of us have never possessed. I pray that this message ministers to you and helps you so that you go in and possess your promised land. And I just pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus, that Jesus, you will be so magnified, revealed, honored in this message. Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And Father, let this be such a now word from your heart that it speak to the hearts of every person, that it bring with it a freshness, new vision, and may it stir each person to rise up and to shine for you in this hour. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You're our teacher. We honor you and we receive from you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. I want to go to a scripture that a lot of time I don't think we fully hear what's been said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 13 through 17. For if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of God controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all that they who live should no longer live for themselves. Therefore, from now on we recognize no man according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. I am so grateful that God has new things for us, that God wants to bring us to the place where finally the past is gone. All the old things are gone. All those mistakes that have haunted us and hindered us and blocked us, washed by the blood. We can step in as a new creation, a totally new person, and go into the promised land. How many of us have wandered around the mountain again and again, held captive because we are guilty because of something we did? God wants to bring you to a place today where you are swallowed up in His love so that you no longer live for yourself, but you live for others. The enemy, his desire and his goal is to get you so self-focused that all you think about is you and you begin to defend your turf because you see everything that you've lost and you're frightened about losing more. You're so concerned about you, your rights and your opinions that we lose sight of what Christianity is about. And more importantly, we've lost sight in the secret place of truly getting to know Him. We need to come to that place where we know Him and the greatness of His mercy, His love, the depth of it, and that we can trust that His plans are always perfect. His plans are always ex are just they're right. He's got the right plan for you. Smith Wigglesworth said, Oh, that our hearts and our minds this day might come to that place of understanding where we realize that it is possible if we only believe for God to take all human weakness and failures and transform us by His mighty power into a new creation. See, I love people like Smith Wigglesworth because he was imperfect. He made mistakes, but what he realized that as he abided in the secret place and came before the Lord, God was able to take those weaknesses, those failings, and turn this whole thing around. And I look at my own life and how much you, know, you make a mistake and the enemy wants to so scar you with that, hold you so captivated that God's mad at you and you never receive anything more from the Lord because you feel unworthy, condemned. But if any man is in Christ, Oh, that today you realize that the secret place 
is all about being in Christ. This new creation life where you so yield, your whole identity is now found in Him and not in the old you. In Psalm 91, verse 2 and 3a, I love Psalm 91. And I love that, you know, this secret place message has so blessed me. He goes on, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is He who delivers you from the snare of the trapper. Who does this promise belong to? Those that abide in the secret place of the Most High and come under the shadow of the Almighty, have surrendered and come under His authority, His word, and say, here I am. They presented themselves and they bowed. And in this place, he comes and we can now say, you are my refuge, my fortress, my God. And he delivers us from the snare of the trapper, those things that the enemies put along the way, those obstacles, offenses. That's what he's talking about here. And these offenses try to capture us so that we stop going forward. And we get so injured that we're always cautious, frightened. God wants to do a work in you. He did it in me, and I'm so grateful for the transformation He did. I truly pray that this message, which will include, as the Lord leads, part of my own testimony, will so bless you that you would move in to a new day and a new freedom. Smith said, The world is filled with fear, torment, remorse, and brokenness, but faith and love are sure to come. See, the world needs to see a real witness in you and me because it's filled with brokenness. There's a whole lot of people that know how to put a smile on their face, but inward they are completely broken and wrecked. But as a believer, that should not be you, because you have a hope. You have a place in Him, in the secret place. Every moment of your life, every day, you can come in and abide in the presence of the living God and experience His hug, His touch, that should satisfy you so deep, so much, that you are never the same. Smith explained, you cannot talk about the things that you've never experienced. God has a process of training us. You cannot take people into the depths of God unless you have been broken yourself. I have been broken and broken and broken. Praise God, for the Lord is near those that are broken in heart. You must have a brokenness to get into the depths of God. When you come and in that place a brokenness surrendered and give it to the Lord, then it takes you deeper. It becomes a worship. God loves that worship of a broken and sincere and contrite heart. Come as you are. Come in that place where, God, I am so broken. I am so at an end. I come to you. Stop running from him and run to him. He's the only one who can fix, heal, and restore. He's the only one whose touch can breathe into you a new hope. Smith said, I've seen him many times, and seeing him always changes me. Victory over your struggle is one of all things, in Romans 8, 32. And God has promised to give you. Many needs have broken my heart, but I could say to you, the troubled one, God is greater than your heart, greater than your circumstances, greater than the things that hold you, God will deliver you if you dare believe Him. But I emphasize it again and again and again before I could get people to believe God. It starts with us coming and seeking Him. You can't give what you've not got. And there's so many people that are sharing a message of head knowledge of the Word. They are regurgitating a message they read in a book. They're regurgitating a prophecy someone else gave. But there's no life to it. There's no authority in the spiritual realm to it. And I don't want to go find a great book with great messages and repeat it. I want to get into the secret place. And I want the Spirit of the living God to speak it to me so that there's in me living revelation. So that there flows out of me waters, living waters, that feed the parched. You know, minister life. You and I are here by purpose. You've been called, placed at this time. The enemy knows that. But you're no use when it's you. 
But when we come and in the real brokenness, as we are in the secret place, when we go in and we go after him and we get a hold of him and we're changed, the world sees it. And you've got something that's so real. You get your first breakthrough. It will so persuade you. It will so touch you and change you. When you come, and I've been there, so broken, so desperate. Father, I come because I have nowhere else to go. I've knocked at every door, and every door has been shut on my face, and I'm hurt, I'm damaged, I'm broken. I come to you. I give it to you. And he moved, and he did such a work in this man. And he continues to change this man. And I am forever grateful. And I will do for the rest of my life. Testify, share about him out of that gratitude and worship because of what he did in me. But we need to see him. And I love what Smith Wigglesworth said. And we see that, of course, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The degree that we see him we become like Him. And God wants you in the secret place to hold on. Keep looking at Him until you know Him. Until you know His heart. Get in the secret place and allow the Holy Spirit to open the Word and remind and speak and reveal so you know Him. Because His thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. Let's stop putting God in our box. Let's stop dictating that our ways are higher, our thoughts are greater. They're not. Ours fail. His doesn't. So in the secret place, if you will take the time and wait, and surrender, and just be, be still, and the honor and recognizing that He is God, and say, have your way. I come that you might speak to me. I need to hear your voice. We come to that place. All old things have passed away. There is this place of revelation in the secret place where you finally hear His voice speak to you. All old things have passed away. You walk away clean. You walk away pure. You walk away with a confidence. You walk away with a boldness. You walk away effective. All old things have passed away. That you can stand up like Paul. And in the natural, you look at the things he did. But in Christ, he could turn and say, I'm guilty of sin against no one. Changed. In Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. And may the Spirit of God speak this to you in the secret place today. May He breathe on these words. And may they go deeper than they've ever gone. Do not call to mind the former things. Stop. Don't let them come back into this brain. Don't call to mind the former things. Stop thinking about them. Or ponder on the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Now, in the secret place of His presence, if you will make the decision, I will not call to mind the former things or ponder on the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. You Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In that place where you've been walking in the wilderness and it's just been, you know, this most difficult season that never ends of barrenness, of dryness. God says, not alone am I going to uh, touch you. I'm going to make a road to bring you out and I'm going to cause rivers to come so that there's life, even the most dead places in your life. Even the most barren places. He touches and they become green again. Smith said, The Lord wants all saved people to receive power from high. Power to witness, power to act, power to live, and power to show forth the divine manifestation of God within. 
The power of God will take you out of your own plans and put you in the plan of God. You will be unmantled and divested of that which was purely of yourselves and put into divine order. If you will take the time and linger in the secret place and just keep pushing a little deeper, he will begin to dismantle all of the old, all the old clothes that we carried of the past don't belong to you anymore. Paul explained, put off the old and put on the new. This is a season where God wants to do something in you that no one else can. Don't look to the left or the right. Look to Jesus. And in the secret place, let him do it. Give him time. Give him the opportunity. Give him the commitment and consecration of your heart. I'm yours. Smith said, instead of laboring according to your own plan, it will be God working in you and through you to do His good pleasure and through the power of the Spirit within you. Someone has said, you're of no good until you have the eye knocked out. Christ must reign within. And the life of the Holy Ghost means at all times the subjection of your own will to make way for the working out of the good and acceptable and perfect will of God within us. Every day, I surrender and allow the Spirit of the living God to work in me the good and perfect and acceptable will of the Lord. Allow Him to do and to work in and through me, to come in this place of surrender, giving Him the time, honoring Him, and giving Him place. I make it a custom. I think that we need to get good customs in our life. A custom of how we start our day, how we finish our day. Practice it until it becomes a custom. Not religiously, but reality. Smith said, do not be satisfied with anything less than the knowledge of a real change in your nature. The knowledge of the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Do not be satisfied with a life that's not wholly swallowed up in God. I did a video on David Brenner. A man had a horrible life, filled with depression, but met with the Lord and the God would swallow him up. And when he was swallowed up, he was a different person. Caused one of the greatest revivals. God is looking for those that will so yield that God can swallow them up. I want swallowed up. I want so caught up, consumed, raptured in Him now. Caught up that my whole world is built in Him, around Him. I recognize we're in dark, perilous, gloomy times. The Word confirms that. But in this dark, gloomy, perilous time, you and I are to arise, shine. I can't do that by myself. I don't have it, but he does. He does, and he's bigger. He's bigger than your past. He's bigger than your hurt. He's bigger than your failures. He's bigger. He's got to get bigger in here, in the secret place, by allowing the Spirit of God to so speak the word. Have fellowship with him. Holy Spirit, show me, tell me, talk to me. Remind me of Jesus, all that he did. Keep thinking, pondering on that. Recall that again and again until it gets so big in you. Smith said, every new revelation means a new dedication. Every time we go further, there has to be a rededicating, consecrating. I'm yours. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I've got to get my hands off. The worship that's supposed to come forth is His. He's supposed to fill it. Have, it belongs to Him. So I dedicate it. I consecrate it. I give it to Him. I yield. Joshua 3, verses 4 through 5. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God with the Levitical priests carrying it, then you shall set out from the place and go after it. However, there shall be between you and it a distance of 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way which you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. 
Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord your God will do wonders among you. Aren't you grateful that there is a tomorrow? God has a tomorrow for you, and it's a good tomorrow. He wants to work wonders for you tomorrow. It may look dark and gloomy. I've seen the, the forecasts. I've seen all the stuff that the world's saying, the economists are saying, what they're saying about food. I see all that, and it's not good, but I see in Him, by the Holy Spirit, a hope in a future because He's my source and He's my supply. There's a video out there. I encourage you to check it out. He is your source and your supply. I look to Him. That Ark of the Covenant, which speaks of the secret place, speaks of the presence. Follow it. And I'm grateful that today, through the blood, there is no distance. I can get so near, so close, close as you want, close that you can hear, close that the Lord can whisper into your ears. Close. Draw nigh, and He will draw nigh to you. How close do you want to get? How close are you willing to press in? In Joshua 3, 13, it shall come about when the souls of the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan will be cut off and the waters which are flowing down from above will stand in one heap. See, we are waiting. This is what the enemy's done. He wants us to be held captive by the past, by mistakes, by hurts, by people. So we never move forward. And why would we? Because everything we've known has shown us that it fails. But I want you to recall what I shared with you a minute from Joshua. That he's going to take us in a way that we've never been before. You've never been this way. When the Spirit of God is leading you, when the Spirit of God is taking you, and when you step forward, see, I'm saying, God, when the waters dry up, then I go in. God says, step in, and the waters dry up. Move forward. Well, if you give me this, if you do this, then I'll do it. God's saying, move forward. But Lord, I've been hurt and broke. Then get back in the secret place and let him do a work in you. Don't leave until you are refreshed, restored, and encouraged. Remember this, as Smith said. Fear looks when faith jumps. Fear looks when faith jumps. Faith always has an action that goes forward. Fear is always looking back. Fear reminds you of what happened and tries to paint a picture that that's what happened again. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. I get it in the secret place where the Holy Spirit breathes on me the word, opens it, and shares with me the picture. Just like the children of Israel, God gave them the land, and He said to them, go in. Everywhere you put your foot, I have given. Now, let's get that correct. Everywhere you put your foot, it didn't say, I will give you, but I have given. Go get your boots on the ground and possess that which I have given you. Smith said, love is the secret and center of the divine position. Build upon God. You need to be swallowed up in His love every day. So confident, so known, First John chapter 4, that you know His love until the place that you believe His love, until you abide in His love. And I no longer live for me. See, what I love about this, we no longer live for ourselves, but for others. If we are beside ourselves, it's for God. If we're saying it's for you. I'm no longer held captive to the past. My life is dedicated for two things, worship of Him, and out of that worship, to minister to others. It's not about me. It's about Him.
And because in the secret place I so know his heart, his character, and how perfect his ways and wills are, I know I can trust him. And I can delight in his will because that will is the most perfect thing. Let me finish with this. Beloved, let us rededicate ourselves afresh to God. And I pray that that would be your heart cry. As Smith said once again, Beloved, let us rededicate ourselves afresh to God. I pray that this message has truly blessed and ministered to you. If it has, would you please like, share, subscribe, and why don't you hit the, the, you know, the notice button so that you get uh, uh, you know, told of when we have new videos. We're entering a new season. And we're going all out to reach as many people as possible to see more backsliders, to start producing training material to teach solid foundations. They're coming. But this is a critical hour where you and I need to move forward, step up, and do what we're supposed to do. Amen? I pray, as I said, this message has blessed you. Would you also consider joining our prayer partnership program? And one of the reasons I encourage you, and understand it doesn't cost you anything. I know some people don't have money, and I'm not worried about it. We don't ask. The ministry, I want to be a living testimony. Where I trust that God will put on the hearts of people to partner financially. So that those that can't get it, get the word. And maybe one day, they'll come to a place where they can give. And that's a good thing. But never let, if you can't, or God doesn't put your heart on your heart to give, to be part of what God's doing. I want to encourage you, as I said, to consider joining our prayer partnership program because you'll get invited to our Zoom meetings and there are times to hear messages that I don't put on YouTube and get ministry time. Amen? And to receive my email newsletter. For more information, simply go to GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com and go to the partner page. Or you can go to RobertPairs.org. But don't put the www in front of that. Just God, robertpairs.org. I thank you. And I encourage you to check out more in this series. And never forget, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because and through Him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And be blessed.